Welcome to the Hungry James, which is greeting us with reading. Yay, and that reading basically says that there was some conflict and now rich people pick out a couple of poor people from the poor people groups or districts and make them fight to the death till one of them remains and they crown them as their victor and spoil them and whatever to remind them who's boss. Now let's cut to District 12's cat piss never cheese. Having a deer she's hunting gets scared away by love interest number one, Gail, but he makes it up to her with a bird. That's a shit deal, nothing to be happy about cat piss, what's wrong with you? Anyway, today's a day where they got f***ing ass by the capital because we come over and they're about to pick two of them them to go get ass. and everybody's dressing up in their finest to go die. Capus is going to the random name picking of this fuckening with the whole district sister in hand getting scared because she got dreams as she goes getting picked and Capus is like one went up it's fine you're not gonna get picked but then this walking bag of makeup reaches her hand into a bowl to pick a random name and guess what it's not fine and she did get picked bitch. So Cat Wiz volunteers as tribute instead of her sister because she got big ass woman balls then love guy number one takes away Prim because she's crying for her sister. No guards stop him from doing that by the way and also there is a useless cut here see that? I don't know why it's there. I don't know why I'm pointing it out. But it's there. Jennifer Lawrence is so fucking bangable, dude. So holy shit, a volunteer, no one claps, but they all hit her with the Heil Hitler minus two fingers as a sort of salute of solidarity. Then the living makeup doll reaches into the man bowl to pick a man's name because they pick one male and one female. The only two genders that exist. And she picks what is to be possibly love interest number two, Pena. Cat Wiz is given explicitly, specifically, precisely three minutes to say goodbye to her family, but they are taken away in like 90 seconds. And then love interest number one is allowed in and also taken away in under the three minutes that were promised. This is not even close bro. This is some shit, man. You can't spare the actual three minutes you promised for your sacrificial lambs to say goodbye to their family, you whore overlords. Come on. They are then transported away with a human makeup doll who's all like, you're in for a treat, crystal chandelier, sparkling drinks, come glaze donuts, flower, you suck up your nose in other well, offices you shut the fuck and up, make it go, gonna die. Then on the train to the capital, Woody Harley Davidson, who is the previous District 9 winner and is supposed to be their mentor, but he kind of drunk and don't give a shit, but he slowly starts coming around and giving a shit and giving them advice on how to... Uh, whatever, survive or win or whatever. When you're in the middle of the games, some matches can mean the difference between life and death. Now hold on there, cheese dick. Why matches? You just said that building a fire is a retarded idea. Unless those matches are for lighting up a spliff, you're a stupid c Anyway, to survive, you need sponsors. And to get sponsors, you need people to like you. And you're not off to a good start. No one has seen anything for that statement to be remotely true. Hey, bitch. In fact, I'd say she's off to a good start because she volunteered and shit and that's noble or whatever, right? This guy's a dumbass. Anyway, they arrive at the capital and it's full of space age, LG TV, 4K, full age. DLP MP4 MP3 plus people. Capus gets hosed down and sent to world renowned super dead F1 driver Ayrton Senna, who is not dead and a fashion dude in this movie, and he likes her for some reason and wants to give her this dope looking wardrobe to make a good impression on the sheeple of the capital and all these like rounds of celebrity appearances the tributes are going to have to make. And on the first round where they get introduced, they roll in on chariots and all their costumes are supposed to reflect the district that they came from. And District 12 are coal miners, so they're on fake fire and dressed in black. Dope shit. But what the fuck is this district? And what is that one? I'm not even gonna try and speculate on what each district does from their wardrobe because I will go insane and it will take too long. So nerds who read the book, just f let me know in the comments. Anyway, President Golden Snow says a couple shitty words. We find out that Jake Paul from District whatever that almost always wins is gonna be the main asshole in this game. Cat Piss and Quifa are amazed by the temporary living quarters and they go to train with the rest of the tributes in front of the rich sponsors. They're not allowed to kill each other then because of the reason of duh, but they still have squabbles. Speaking of which, Quifa and Nevergees have one at the dinner table and she gets a flashback of him feeding the pigs and throwing her a bread <laughs> yeah, throwing her a bread because she was starving in the middle of the street correct me if i'm wrong but don't pigs eat little trash why are you feeding them such a high value precious research when you're f hard stuck wood tier peasant poor man even if it's like a bad batch of bread is it even possible to fuck up bread i mean you can burn it but like, i'm wasting time doesn't matter more training happens cat piss tells peter to throw a heavy thing so the people don't look at him like he's easy pickings he does and they're impressed i'm not though that shit looks like it's not that heavy pretty sure an anorexic bitch could throw that the same distance but i could be wrong he does arts and crafts too to do camouflage, which he will actually have time and resources to do in the games. Fucking crazy. Maybe with mud and leaves or whatever. Doesn't matter. We see the odds leaderboard. Ha, huh? Peter's 5'7". No bitches. <laughs> then on one of the days before the games, each tributor is supposed to show off their skills, so Cat is gonna shoot a bow, or shoot an arrow, whatever. And Pete's like, shoot straight. As opposed to shooting homosexual. Dumbass. Anyway, she goes in and first shot, she shoots gay. She whiffs the first shot, but nails the second one. Only problem is the rich white people stop paying attention after she whiffed the first one. So she shoots an apple out of a pig's mouth in the room they're in, because the idiots are so cocky 
they don't have a protective safety glass in between them and the tributes and that obviously gets the morons attention and this very high risk very high reward strategy pays off because they give her the highest rating of 11. President Jon Snow tells the flamboyant game maker that he's a dumb autistic fuck for giving her such a high score like what the hell she shot an arrow at your head you f***ing moron but it was good shout though did you say shout it was good she could have killed you man it is good though she shot a pole my man what you say this is good for business my fucking lord god what well, i don't understand <laughs> then all the attributes do interviews she does well with the power of bullshit and another flammable dress then peter gets his interview and he says that there's no way in hell he can get with the girl he likes because she came here with him and that's a 2000 iq power move because now hey bitch can sell the idea of the star cross lovers to sponsors and hopefully get some sponsors next up they get to the day bitches die speaking of bitches hey bitch is in an elevator with cat piss giving her some last minute life-saving advice maybe i'm guessing he does the same with peter because this plane only carries 12 so they might be sending them in batches but what i really want to know is who was with peter in the room that got the tube that lifts them up into the game location area because after the plane ride with the peasant she met up with senna in that room and he gave her a jacket and 30 second countdown began that took actually 60 seconds to finish and she was put in a tube and got lifted up so who was peter with was he with the human makeup doll man that would suck that's a shit end of the stick anyway who gives a shit about peter she gets sent up and after another countdown ends peter fully embraces hey mitch's run like a bitch advice capis goes for a bag first though and almost gets killed doing so then runs away like a bitch too while a bunch of unimportant characters we don't care about murder each other in the middle where all the weapons are she gets to a safe place inspects her shit plays rust irl gathers resources makes traps eats some shit then sleeps in a tree while the game makers watch like pervs and the night she sees that someone made a fire she's like rookie mistake they die obviously to the hand of a newly formed alliance which peter is a part of only because jake paul wants to keep him alive so he can get to capis because he has a massive heart for killing her apparently don't know why and she's obviously disappointed. disappointed but nevertheless next day she makes her way to somewhere which as mr fat Snow's game maker points out is the edge of the play area or game zone and they decide to turn her back around holy shit i didn't know leafy was in this movie god damn anyway they decide to turn her back with fire yeah fireballs and fire trees falling on her and they keep hurling that shit at her until she gets hurt and ends up falling into a river and gets spotted by team 10 and they chase her but she has better climbing stats than them so she evades them by climbing up a tree she also has better shooting stats than them because they miss two shots and peter suggests that they wait for her to come down because she eventually has to come down and they kill her then and they all agree because they are retarded with skulls that are filled with cobwebs because any sane human being would try to climb the tree without the sword or at least try to stab the sword to help them go up the tree or shoot them from a different angle but no they're dumb who cares anyway cat piss is hurt so Hamish talks to some white people aka sponsors and gets her a care package in the form of a packet of his jizz in the form of a packet of magic vaseline that heals her burn wound overnight and in the morning she wakes up before the idiots on the ground and this kid tribute that is in another tree points out a nest of super wasps to her that if stung causes a lot of pain an acid trip and if stung too much you fucking die so she starts raw dogging the branches on trying to cut it down with no protection at all which causes her to get stung a few times when any sane human being would naturally put on their hoodie and pull the strings till their head becomes akin to a uncircumcised penis then pull the sleeves of their jacket over their hands for at least a semblance of protection but no she too is a dumb c but whatever the thing drops and kills one of them lucky hit it's the one with the bow she steals it trips balls and peter tells her to run away and next thing she knows she's been passed out for two days with rue having taken care of her and rue catches her up with the deets of what happened see two people have died and team 10 has stockpiled all the weapons and resources and stuff in the middle of the playing field as bait so the dynamic duo of rue and capis come up with a plan to destroy their shit see rue's gonna distract them with fire and cap is gonna destroy the shit somehow and she's like we need a signal we can use the mocking gaze what are those they're birds that mock gay people we can use the mocking jays so they'll repeat whatever sound you make observe can i get a hoya so they set the plan in motion, distraction in action, and Team 10 leave one behind to protect their ship. Then some other shit happens, that's not important. Basically, the important stuff that happens is Capus uses archery and fruit mines to blow up their ship. And right here, I'd like to direct your attention to Loki, the only reason I wanted to make a video about this movie, which is her nails. Because they keep changing, both in length and cleanliness, throughout this entire movie, sometimes in the same scene even. Unwatchable. I am appalled. Just kidding, I don't give a fuck, but I do feel better that I pointed out. Moving on, they kill that guy for not doing a good job of watching out. Cat just goes back to Rue, who finds her trapped in what looks like the most escapable net trap ever you dumb bitch and after freeing her huey shows up and attacks this never cheese counterattacks and kills him but the bad news is the child is dead very sad rooney for uh, miss cat piss never cheese and the kids district and when she gives her a flowery send off they all riot in district 11 and the capital don't like that so the main game maker wants to kill her off but hey is like don't do that man make the people vote for young love and snow's like hey man you do what you want to do but at the end of the day it's your ass on the line and my foot that's gonna go up it if you fuck up now don't worry young love is good out there and he makes an announcement basically tailored for cat 
cat piss and queef are saying that there can be two winners if they originate from the same district. How this Hot Wheels bearded degenerate window licker is at all convinced by Haymitch's argument is beyond me, but whatever. She goes looking for him at the river where Rue said she... <laughs> she goes looking for him at the river where Rue said he might be and she finds him having visited the local arts and crafts store because he kind of flushed himself into a fucking rock, my guy. What the f***? Whatever, he's hurt and she apparently used up all her magic healing semen mix and didn't keep any for later because that's definitely the only injury she's gonna sustain throughout the whole games. Dipshit. Anyway, they hide inside a cave, fake some romance for the cameras and the sponsors till they get a soup care package and another announcement is made that there will be an extra care package for each district, uh, each of the remaining districts that is, in the middle of the play field tomorrow and she goes to get the thing against Peter's wishes and sees a ginger zip by and take her package. I don't know why this dumb hoe didn't take the rest of the packages with her or at least knock them down. That's what I would do. I mean, at the end of the day, you are in a competition trying to kill each other, right? Anyway, Cat Wiz runs to her package next and gets attacked by this dumb slut. They have a cat fight and she mocks her and Rue, but then big man Tyrone, who's from Rue's district, shows up and kills that s and tells Never Cheese that he'll let her live only this time for Rue. Although the only thing he heard was the bitch he killed mock hers and Rue's friendship. He didn't know anything about her trying to save her and her taking care of all that shit, but who cares? Cat Piss gets back to Pitta. The package turns out to be one more magic Vaseline healing potion. They lube each other up and next day they are healed and they go scavenging. Then a ginger bitch dies on poison berries. Pita was scavenging and too stupid to notice that they were poison. Luckily though, he didn't eat any of them. Now it's only them, Big Man Tyrone, and Jake left. So the game makers are like, screw this, let's kick this shit into high gear. They turn day into night and create big ass mutant bulldogs out of the Rubbaloos that kill Tyrone and attack the fake not so fake lovers. So they run away to find safety on top of the big metal cornucopia, but it ain't so safe because Jake's there. They fight, Peter ends up in a chokehold with Cat pointing an arrow at Jake. So she shoots him in the hand and Peter kicks him in the balls, I think, I can't tell. And he falls down to the dog and gets eaten alive. So she puts him out of his misery with an arrow and they're happy, hooray, we we won, they thinking they won, but no. Another announcement is made with the game maker saying, Y'all remember that fucking rule we made? Yeah, it ain't no more, we lied. So she's like, screw this, f those guys, we ain't giving them what they want. Let's just fucking kill ourselves with these berries. Noise, a suicide pact, I'm in. And right before they yeet their meat into the street, the game makers are like, I don't like where this is going. Stop! Fine, there can be two winners this time, you petty bitches. Goddamn, you know, some old white dude is gonna have my head. I hope you're happy. Weird beard man gets Blicky, the capital, and the president low key mad as fuck because they showed them up. They have to keep up this lovey dovey facade for the cameras and the people. And now there's a weird ass love triangle. This movie gets 97 pedicures out of 12 industrial strength horse glue buckets.